Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Today we're looking at something really rather exciting. The brand new Remington Air Cobra PCP. Now as you all know if you've been watching this channel, I am not a PCP man. Only certain ones really stick out to me, such as the Artemis M16, because it's sort of an underdog thing. Where it's a cheaper gun that can, in my experience, my testing, knock spots off of some of the much more expensive gear. But this one gets me for another reason. One, it's obviously as a, a Remington, one of their earlier models, uh, or PCP models we'll say, but we won't spoil too much there, it is going to be their sort of introductory PCP, so the pricing is quite sensible. RRP on these is 399 so it's while it's obviously not a cheap gun, it's not going to break the bank, we'll put it that way. But why I like it is because I've been chatting to the guys at Sports Marketing about these, who are the importer in the UK, and what I've heard is it basically, so far, we haven't tested it yet, but it ticks all the right boxes for a gun that I'd be looking at for hunting. It's solid, it's sturdy, and the most important bit is it's simple in the way that it works. Which is a huge plus for me, as you don't want anything too overly complicated that could potentially break down in the field, and it essentially completely ruins your hunting trip, let's put it that way. So, without further ado, let's move on to the brand new Remington Air Cobra. And let's see if Remington's had a swing and a miss with this one, or if they've potentially got a hit on their hands. So, let's move on to features. Okay then, so, Remington Air Cobra, what do you get for your money? As always, we start at the rear of the gun, and you'll find a nicely finished rubber recoil pad with the Remington logo stamped into the butt. Again, doesn't really do too much, but it's a nice little bit of attention to detail. Now the other good thing about this gun, and why I'm excited to review it, is because it comes with this lovely ambidextrous thumbhole stock, as you can see here. And again, why I say excited to talk about that is because as you guys know, and uh, Mr. Homer, if you're watching this, this is also, this is for you mate, um, a lot of the guns we review on this channel are right-handed. And there's, in general, in the market these days, there's not that many left-hand variants of, of rifles in general, or even, even ambidextrous. So getting a gun that does have a proper, nicely finished cheek piece that you can see here, a nice, quite a proud sitting cheek piece, if that makes sense. It's, it's very nicely done, it's very pronounced. But having that on both left and right side, so it appeals to everybody, is a great move. And I'm more than happy to get this reviewed because of that. But, again, moving on. You've got a nice bit of checkering around the grip here. And if we pan the camera down here hopefully you can just about make that out i do apologize if you can't um there's the as per all remington rifles the remington logo has been carved into the grip again doesn't necessarily do anything but it does give that rifle that little bit of extra flash to go with it which is always quite nice the gun as you can see is a bolt action and you can see here the bolt is also lockable so you can lock the bolt back for when removing the mag or it also obviously it's just an extra safety feature you can have so the bolt cannot be uh, it can't be slammed shut and fired essentially so it's a nice little safety feature to have and again just a nice little thing to give the gun if we drop down just a little bit for two seconds that is a two-stage adjustable trigger and the manual safety which as you'll know you know i'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to safeties is right where it should be easy to get to not particularly dangerous to use job done. But again, we'll talk a bit more about that trigger a bit later on. Coming up, you also get the scope with the gun. It is a standard dovetail rail, no Picatinny things or anything like that here, and the scope is a 3 to 9 by 50. It is a standard duplex scope, and you haven't got an adjustable objective on the end, so you might be able to just pull that back so you can see. It is a sort of, it's a semi-basic scope, but again, we'll talk a bit more about that a bit later on when we get to the handling section. The rifle is a multi-shot, and you can see here the magazine poking just out the side. Now the neat thing with this mag, as I'm sure you can see here, is it does have a pellet counter as well. Which, I know it's a silly thing, some may even say that's gimmicky, but when you're actually out in the field, it is nice to know what you have left. And again, it's something where, it's something that um, a working gun, I think, should have. It always helps when you have this, like we said, when you're actually out on the sticks trying to get something for the pot, it's good to know what you've got left. Got a little bit more checkering on the four stock here. Now, if you look at our Remington Sabre review, that pattern will look incredibly familiar because it is pretty much identical. Another neat little feature, which I'm a big fan of, if we can just make that out there, I can't really get the camera underneath to show you, but that's where the pressure gauge is. That is where all pressure gauges should be, either there or on the side, so you haven't got to pretty much stick your nose over the barrel to see how much pressure you've got left. Again, good idea and, and this is why I was looking forward to reviewing this gun because on on paper it seems to come up very very well like we said good idea with that there moving further along you got a barrel band some people will probably remove that or they'll put a slightly different one on but nice little thing to have moving further along the silencer does come with it 
and the rifle does come with a proper half inch UNF threaded barrel instead of the metric ones that you seem to get on the Artemis guns. Now you can get adapters for that which will turn it into the half inch UNF um, Welsh Willy or Woodfield GCP um, he tends to do one which is nice and cheap but it also means you can put any gun, say you had an Artemis M16 you can put any silencer sorry, on the gun and off you go again great little thing to have but again this is half inch UNF as standard so uh, job done and well played Remington and uh, sports marketing and you can see I've slightly already loosened this cap off because it is a pain to do with one hand the fill probe is built into the cylinder so you won't have to search your pockets for a fill probe or anything like that it is literally built into the gun so all you need is your quick release uh, tip on the end of your whip and just plug that on and off you go when you're done you get this handy little cap just to uh, put on the end here like so like I said awkward to do with one hand and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll so that is the Remington Air Cobra from a feature perspective, so far it's getting a huge thumbs up from me. It's everything that I want with the gun, and it's everything is where it should be. The pressure gauge is underneath, the safety is in front of the trigger. Admittedly, it's a manual safety, but if I'm being honest, auto safeties on PCPs, if you've ever used one before, they can be a little bit annoying, if I'm being honest. Um, the only one I really liked was the one on the Hatsan AT44, actually, but um, we're going off topic now. But the gun overall is, is specced how I hoped it would be. So, Features, very good so far, but let's move on to weighing the thing because this could be what turns a lot of people off. We'll take the scope off when we get it weighed because most people will, well it's not a bad scope but again we'll talk a bit more about that later but most people I imagine will probably be replacing that with something else. So we'll get that scope taken off so you've got just the weight of the rifle and we'll see what the rifle comes out at. So let's get out the scales. Well. We've got it on the scales and I hope you guys and girls out there are plenty strong and you're eating your Cheerios because she weighs nine and a half pounds as you can see there and yeah essentially she's pretty damn heavy it eats something like an Artemis M16 for breakfast when it comes to weight we'll put it that way but as we always say scales have just gone off that was well timed as we always say weight can be mitigated by balance so Let's get the mag loaded, see how that works, and then put the thing to the shoulder and see just how heavy this thing really feels. So let's crack the mag out, take a look at that, and then let's see how the Air Cobra feels when it's in the shoulder. So before we get to the actual handling segment of this review, we need to take a look at the mag. And it's quite an interesting mag actually. You can see on here on the side you've got a pellet counter, which you can see we've already loaded two pellets off so you can see uh, just how the thing works. And it's nice and easy to use as well. Now, unlike the Artemis mags, which I'm a big fan of, especially those that you'll find on the M16 and the M11, you don't need a tool with this to poke those pellets home. With this, it's simply a case of put your finger on top of the mag like so, and spin the mag around, and it's simply a case of poking the pellet home using your thumb and finger. Simple as that. And essentially, keep going until the mag is ready to rock and roll. You can see here, just turn it to the side, you can see now she's gone up to four. So. It's a, a fairly simple to use mag, but it's a well specced one at the same time. It is a little bit plastic, if you can hear that or not, and you can see there's a few little marks on here where we have used it for uh, pellet testing and things like that, but otherwise, yeah, pretty good mag. So then, let's move on to handling. So then, handling. Let's see what a nine and a half pounds rifle unscoped feels like when it's put to the shoulder. Now, let's have a go. Now it's actually, let's just find out for two seconds, this is a very crude way of looking at it, but as you can see there, it's actually balanced seriously nicely, which does, I know you're going to say, yeah, whatever Dan, but it does knock off a hell of a lot of that weight. The balance on it is absolutely beautiful. Now it's still not a feather light gun. I'm not going to lie to you and say, yeah, it's as light as your BSA Ultra when you put it to your shoulder, because it's not, it's not even close. But at the same time, it's a lot lighter feeling and a lot more balanced than a lot of the other guns we've tried. For instance, you guys will know that I'm quite a big fan of the Artemis M11 and M22 because it's very much, like we say, it's the brick top rifle. Same as this, really. Uh, heavy is good, heavy is reliable. If it does not work, you can always hit them with it. And it's very much, it's a similar case with this. But this, unlike those, I'd actually go as far as to say the Air Cobra feels lighter than the M11 and the M22 does, especially when you've got a fairly big old scope on top there as well. 
you can hold this thing pretty damn still. And again, it's simply because of balance. Now, let's move on to the next most important part, which is the trigger. And our more eagle-eyed viewers out there will be able to, well, pretty much they'll know what, what this is going to be like. So if you guys can see my trigger finger there, we'll just give this a little pull and aim at that puddle. Right, so, why, I'll explain what I, I meant earlier by the eagle-eyed viewers. This is the same unit as what you'll find on the XS-19, um, a lot of the Gamo guns and the Benjamins and Crossmans you'll see out there. It's the Gamo trigger unit. Now, it is a two-stage. At the minute, it's more set up to feel like a single stage. You might have seen then there was no real slowdown as I'm pulling it. It was just pulling, 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 bang, off it went. But it's not the worst trigger on the market. I'll say that here and now. As you can see, it's not a it's not heavy trigger at all. It's it's not the lightest, but it's not heavy. And it is an adjustable unit. You can see there through the trigger guard, you've got that little adjustable um, like Allen screw in there now. So you can fettle with it ever so slightly. But what is a blessing and I wouldn't say the trigger's a curse, but it's it's a solid seven, six or seven out of ten job. What is a blessing because it has this trigger unit though? and it will be a massive bonus to people who are looking into this rifle, is that there is a man out there in the deepest part of Wales that is also very much like myself. He's a firearms dealer. But there are two major differences between me and this fellow I'm talking about now. One is that he's considerably more Welsh than I am, and two, he knows what he's doing, um, and that is Woodfield GCP. And he makes the upgrade triggers for the XS-19s, the Benjamins, like we said earlier, the Gammos, you name it. If it uses the trigger unit like you can see here, he's got an upgraded trigger unit that um, he provides, which will absolutely transform this gun. So much so, he's feeling so confident, in fact, that he sent us one for this review. So, uh, yeah, this should be interesting, Will, if you're watching this. But um, we'll get that fitted a bit later on. And what we'll do in a moment is we'll do some accuracy testing with the standard trigger because not everybody out there is really up to potentially maybe taking the triggers out and things like that. It's a very, very simple process to get it done. And we'll, we'll send you the um, instructions as to how to do it. It pretty much looks like a two-minute job. You've not really got to take anything really out. You just knock a pin out, put the ease trigger unit in, put the pin back in. You're more or less 70% done. Um, but, like we said, not everybody will do that. So we'll do one accuracy test with the standard trigger, and then we're going to do it again, maybe push the target slightly further out for feeling brave, and try it again with Will's trigger unit. So, uh, yeah, the gun and your trigger's reputation is on the line, Will. But, um, yeah, we'll see uh, how that transforms the gun. But, like I said, out the box, 6, 7 out of 10 job for the trigger. What I will give this gun props for, though, is, obviously because of the trigger unit, what it is, that safety toggle is right where it should be. Push straight towards the trigger blade, safety on. You can't really accidentally hit the trigger because your finger, well, you reach as far as you can and it's stopped by the safety there. And to switch it off, it's not like the XS38, which we complained about, where you're pulling into the trigger to switch the safety off because you're asking for trouble. It's simply, you flick away. So then there's no way you can accidentally flick back and hit the trigger. So, yeah, it's simple, but at the same time, I like that. There's a phrase that I like quite a lot, and it goes, keep it simple, stupid. So, yeah, well done, uh, Remington, for the, uh, the safety on the uh, Air Cobra there. Top notch. Let's talk now about the bolt, because the bolt is a strange one. It's your standard, I'll just show you there, fairly standardish looking bolt. Um, it's very similar to some of the other designs on the market. I believe the Brocock Compato actually has a very similar looking bolt than this. What with the, you can see there's O-rings going around the grip there. Now, the bolt on this, out the box, it was a little bit stiff. But now, we've put a few shots through it, about, say, got it zeroed in roughly. Again, you can see there's a different scope on here, and you'll, I'll explain why in a second. Um, we've got it zeroed in roughly, and it's probably had about 200 shots through it. I'd say 250 if we're being completely generous. But the bolt itself is now becoming quite smooth. It's still a little bit clunky at the rear when you get to that, when it actually cocks the gum, just right at the back of its stroke. But it is getting there. It's not a bad unit, and it does have quite that satisfying clunk clunk sort of feel to it. It sort of feels a little bit, I know we said this about the Crowl um, review, what we did, the standard Puncher Pro, but it almost feels a bit more like you, you're cocking a, a rim fire than an actual air rifle. There's almost nothing there. With this, you get that clunky Again, might put some people off, so I might say clunky's a bad thing, but this is just personal taste. I kind of like it. It feels like it's going to last pretty much forever. So let's get rid of this pellet. Right, so now we're going to talk about the stock, and I do apologise if we're rambling. I've seen a few comments saying blah blah blah. <laughs> I get the I get the um, the point. Uh, the stock itself is lovely. It really is. 
the grip, I've got bigger hands, so I like a thicker grip. In fact, if you've got smaller hands, this might actually put you off. But the grip is nice and chunky, and it's really nicely figured. Now, the checkering itself is quite thin, what you can see on the grip here, and even up here. It's a little bit thicker on the four stock, but by the grip, it's a little bit thin. It's not really going to give you any major added grip when it comes to shooting in poor weather conditions, but it's there. It's nice that they included it. It looks fairly nice, so we'll give it that for that one. But overall, when it comes to shouldering it, and like we said, it does mitigate a hell of a lot of what that weight you can feel. Like I said, still not a light rifle, but it does definitely do its job. And that cheek piece, that is gorgeous, especially if you've got a fat head like me, like a football-shaped head. That, I can just get my eye lined up perfectly even while I'm talking. It is a lovely, lovely stock. It really is. And as with most Remingtons, if you can see that, you get that lovely Remington logo put in the bottom here. The only thing I'd say is the overall colouring of the stock is a little bit plain. You guys out there who are smart with your oiling and things like that and staining, I'm sure if you made this a little bit darker, or Remington, if you're listening to this, stain these a bit darker or make them look like the Sabre stocks. What a gun. What a pretty looking gun. Now, I've said this before. To me, that looks a bit like... In my opinion, you might be about to spit at me and say, how dare you say that about such, such rifles, but doesn't that to you look a little bit like a HW100 and an S410? Got a little bit drunk one night, and they sort of wound up in the stables together, sort of thing. It does look like their bastard child. <laughs> to me, anyway, it does. But overall, handling-wise, it's a pretty damn impressive gun. Main takeaways are, it is heavy, but shoulder one. You might be surprised. And again, the trigger... We can work on that. So that's handling out the way. Let's move on now to chronographing. It's not a lot of good if your gun handles well, but it's only good for three shots, and, well, there's a five-feet, uh, foot-pound spread. So let's get the chronograph testing, and it's an unregulated rifle, so this could be quite interesting. And uh, let's see how the rifle can do. Let's move on. Right then, so chronograph testing time. You can see we've got the chrono all set up, pointing in a nice and safe direction. The phone is plugged in now, you can see, so you'll get a live reading as to what the gun's doing. And if we pan across, we'll show you the rifles all prepped and ready off the left here. And the pellets we'll be using is, as we did last few tests, we'll be using the RWS Superdome pellets. Now, well, two reasons for this. One is that the Superdomes, weight-wise, they're 8.3 grain, which is more or less smack dab in the middle when it comes to the variation between 177 pellet weights. So like you can get a few, say mid sevens and you get the real heavy one say I think Barracuda is 10.65 going off memory. These are 8.3 so they're almost smack dab in the center. They're a good weight and obviously you've got your JSBs and such which are 8.4 um, and such like that. So it's pretty much roughly a little bit off but almost the same weight as them. Now the second reason and this is why we didn't use JSBs or air arms is that out the tin they're a pretty damn consistent pellet. Um, the variation we had between them, the lowest we had was 8.2 grain and the heaviest was 8.5 with the majority of them pretty much straight out the tin being bang on 8.3 so yeah, result. So like I said, it's, uh, they're a good pellet but it's also because of laziness, um, not going to lie. But yeah, that's what we'll be using today. We'll get the rifle, we'll get the camera sorry, all uh, set up in its stand you can see there and what, as per always what we're looking for is consistency, power and shot count. So advertised as a full power rifle but we're not dealing with a regulator so this one could be quite interesting so then let's get the gun all set up and loaded up and let's see what the air cobra can do So then, chrono test results. How do we think we did? Well, the gun, as you saw, we shot it until it started giving out, which is, if you can see that there, it's around 120, 130 maybe bar. It starts to give up from a 200 bar fill. Now, the gun was going incredibly well. As we said, these pellets was weighed before we got them tested. However, if we go on to shot 27 there was one shot upset the entire apple cart and it was shot 27 there as you can see 740 10.09 and i thought what the hell could have caused that because like i said the, the pellets was weighed and superdimes are usually cracking pellets 
However, when I took the mag out, and that's probably you'll see there's a slight pause between me loading the next mag, so sort of me scratching my head and thinking, what the hell? As I loaded the next mag, there's a regular superdome just to the left, and to the right, there was a little piece of superdome trapped in there. Now I think, I think that is a piece of the skirt which is torn off as the gun has fired, and it's left the remains of it stuck inside the corner of the mag. So I've had to get that out and put it all back together again. And I think that was why that shot came out incredibly low because normally I would say, obviously it could be something up with the gun, but if you keep going, I mean, it just keeps, or well, we don't have a repeat um, instance of this happening. Whereas with that shot, like I said, we had that left in the mag trapped in there, which is a bugger to get out. Um, yeah, and other than that, it was absolutely fine. Well, shot count wise, again, bear in mind this is an unregulated gun. Uh, it drops off at around, da, 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 what should we say? Say 103, it starts to give out. The 103rd shot it gives up. Again, unregulated gun, that is pretty damn good. The best thing about this gun, though, what impressed me the most, is the fact that there's no real power surge, shall we say. It's all pretty damn consistent all the way through. I mean, max spread, if we ignore that, obviously ignore that first shot, and the oh, 27th shot, sorry, and the fact that we shoot it through to the point it starts giving up. If we ignore that, let's see, what's the lowest it gets to? Do, 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 I think. 758. We'll say that there, 758. I mean, it is, you can tell it's starting to give out there, but let's, let's say that to be extra fair. So let's say 758, and the hottest shot was... 783. So what is that? It's two. That's a 25 FPS spread for an unregulated gun for, well, when is that? 758. But then it picks up there. It goes 764. Yeah, 758. Because at this point, like we said, it's starting to drop off 761. Then you've got 754, 756. And it starts gently coming back down. So yeah. You got a 25, if I'm doing my maths correctly, probably not. You got a 25 FPS spread. That's unregulated gun. I mean, I think that's on the same level as the. Um, admittedly, the barrel wasn't cleaned or anything like that, but um, the Artemis M16 that we tested and the Zabroya Hortizia, I believe. I think that was. Was that 21, 22? I'd flick through with this bloody ages ago now, and obviously uh, you don't want to see me sieving through um, older chrono tests. But how about that then? You've got 100 plus shots like we said, in an unregulated gun, and the consistency is also pretty damn good. Like we said, there's no real... It does creep up into the 11s, but it doesn't go up and then drop off like a lot of um, unregged guns do. Or you'll see one patch where it's a consistent for 20 shots um, with, say, half a foot-pound more power or something like that, and then, how can I put it, it just dives after there, and it's sort of like, oh, well, crap, that was the sweet spot over. With this, it seems pretty damn flat, almost all the way through, like we said, almost like a regular gun, 25 FPS throughout almost the entire thing, if we discard that. So overall, consistency-wise, I'm pretty happy. I mean, obviously, I'll leave it to you guys in the comments to see what you say, but I think for an unregged gun, and with a standard cylinder, which is only 200 bar max fill, that's pretty damn impressive, I've got to say it. And again, it's that was the thing that worried me, like we said earlier, the fact they didn't have a regulator, I thought, oh, crap, I had flashbacks of the hat sand. Um, and the S410 that we had, which the S410 was, to be fair, it was easy to find out where the sweet spot was, but you still had to hunt for it. Whereas with this, it seems pretty damn consistent pretty much all the way through. But that's it for that. Next up, we need to, talking about accuracy and such and sweet spots, we need to talk about how this thing shoots. So let's get it pumped back up to 200 bar. Let's get our target set up and get the gun zeroed in. We will be using the scope that the gun comes with, otherwise it's a bit unfair chucking a, a bigger, better scope on there because some of the people watching this review, I'm sure they're probably, they might even stick with that sort of thing and, like we said, upgrade uh, a later date. So we'll keep the standard sc uh, scope on there for now. Uh, what we will do is we'll do a group with... We'll do the shooting off screen as we usually do with uh, a, a pellet selection, see which one it groups best with. And then after this, we'll find the we'll film the best group with the standard trigger and see what sort of accuracy we can get and then after that we will put on the woodfield gcp trigger and see what a difference it makes because i think that could be maybe not for you guys but for me i'm actually quite interested in uh, cracking it out and giving it a go so that's it for chronograph uh, and consistency testing let's move on to accuracy so then 25 yard accuracy test time 
Now, I do have a confession to make with this one. We're not going to be filming the accuracy testing that we had done with the standard scope that comes with it, that 3 to 9 by 50 And how can I put it? It's not simply because we couldn't be bothered. Quite the opposite. We was bothered. <laughs> but we just can't be bothered to show you. It's simple as that. There's really not a great deal to look at. As you can see, with the standard scope, the gun's consistent. Lee awful. But saying that, here's the best group that we did get. Um, you can see here, Remington or HN, field target trophy pellets. We had a reasonably okay-ish cluster there at 25. It's a bit messy, but again, that was with the standard scope. Now we're still using the standard trigger, as you can see there, hopefully there's no shadow in the way, there's no trickery going on, but we have changed the scope to the Conus Pro 3 to 12 by 50 that we do have on this uh, channel quite a lot. Now, I've seen now what the gun can do with a different scope. Again, I'm not hiding it, you can see here, it was rubbish with the standard one. And this is why you're gonna get a big Dan top tip. If you pick up an Air Cobra, sell the scope and put it towards a better one. Trust me, put it on eBay, say 20 quid, after that, pick yourself up a Nico Sterling Mountmaster or even put it towards a Milrow Clearview, anything like that, and you're laughing. It's money towards, I hate to say it, SMK, Remington, towards a better scope. But again, we did try, it was crap. <laughs> so let's move on now. We've got a much better scope all plumbed in. We've got our uh, rest here, and you probably can't see it from here. You've got the uh, target there over at 25 yards. There's no card in there yet, but I guarantee you it is over there. So we're going to get this all plumbed in, make sure she's still in zero, because we was actually zeroing this originally in the field before we had that downpour, and, well, it's bad enough here. You can see the puddles. You don't want to be shooting around that field. So we're just going to make sure she's still on point, and then we're going to move on to the accuracy testing. So let's shut our trap. Stop the uh, jabbering on, and let's go move on to the actual test. Let's see what the Air Cobra can do. Okay then, so that was a full mag through the rifle into our target card at 25 yards. And what do we think of the group? Well, if we take a look, I mean the group, we should never put that five pence there, but you can see here, the group actually looks pretty big right until you compare it to my fingernail. And then we get a five pence piece, which just pretty much straight up devours it. Again, we just put it side by side. You can see the actual size difference, hopefully, between the two. I promise you that is not a joke five pence piece. That is a genuine five pence piece. So out the box, the gun has got some pretty damn good accuracy. If you change the scope. <laughs> if you don't, keep it close. But it's got pretty damn good accuracy straight out the box. And this was with, as you can see, the Remington FTT or HN FTT field target trophy pellets. So that's pretty good, but 25 yards, I mean, hunting distances there, guns in the UK at least, at sub 12, 25 yards is pretty good, especially if you're using a Springer. But this is a PCP, and I think we can push it slightly further than that. So, to really put it, put it through its paces, why don't we fit the Welsh Willy Trigger unit and move it out to 35 yards if we can? Let's get that done, and then let's see, with a full mag, what the Air Cobra can do. Just going to demonstrate something real quick because this is definitely worth talking about before we get onto our accuracy section. First thing I'm going to say is part two of our accuracy test is at 31.5 yards, bang on. Um, I was going to be cheeky and round it up to 32, but well, as they say, honesty is the best policy. Hopefully you might just be able to make it out just over that way. But just what, what I actually want to talk about is, as we said, we're now using the Woodfield GCP trigger unit. And I've got to say, first thing first, this isn't the most important thing, obviously, but how much better does that gun look with that trigger unit on there? It absolutely pops on this gun. But the most important thing, you guys, let's just knock that safety off. As you can see, the gun is empty, there's no pellets in there, and we're pointed in a very safe direction straight into that mound over there. Now, you guys may have remembered, hopefully, when we showed the trigger pull on the handling section. It wasn't the heaviest, but it just had a hell of a long pull. We'll put that in your mind and now look at this. Now this is straight out of the bag, and watch this. How good is that? 
Will, I don't know if you set this up for me, mate, uh, before you sent it out. Like I said, this, this trigger unit, I've not tampered with it at all. It is a proper two-stage adjustable unit, but that is just how I like a trigger. Single stage and stupidly light. And there's very little travel on this as well. It's superb, mate. It really, really is. I'd recommend to anybody, I know it's going to sound like I'm uh, sponsoring Will now, but it is the truth. You've just seen it for yourself. If you're looking at an Air Cobra, definitely invest in one of these triggers to go with it. It absolutely, well, we'll see in the accuracy test, but I've got a feeling this is going to transform the gun. And for $23.99, it's not the world. We'll put it that way. But the difference will fill the world a difference. So that's enough of rambling. Let's move on to our 31.5 yard accuracy test. And let's see what this trigger unit can do. I do hope we don't get our random flyer this time because we can't blame the trigger, can we? This time we know it will be me. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on and see what the gun's capable of. Okay then, so accuracy test results, how did we get on? Now hopefully, just one thing I'm going to say, the camera is making things a bit brighter for you than what it is here for me at the moment. Unfortunately, when you're filming inside a barn and around a farm area, God is pretty much your lighting manager, and let's just say I must have ticked him off today because he's not agreeing with me at all. Uh, it's even absolutely pouring it down, which you might have seen in the um, actual accuracy testing. But moving on, first group we're going to look at is the group we did with the standard scope and scan standard trigger. Now this is at 25 yards, and you can see here, it's okay, it's not the best. Now bear in mind also this gun, it's had a few shots through it, but it's in no way leaded in. And with standard scope, with the Remington HNFTT, you'll get in a group under 25 pence. Hang on, I know it looks like a pellet hole there, but I assure you that is just a piece of wood. No cheating going on there. Uh, but you can see there, it's a 20 pence group. So yeah, like we said, not bad, not the best. After that, we put the Conus scope on and tried again. Once again, standard trigger and things tightened up really quite nicely. We just got our five pence this time. There we go. You can see it fits perfectly under a five pence piece. The most interesting one though is, and as you can see if I pan up there you might get a better look at it, there's the uh, Woodfield GCP Welsh Woolly Trigger Unit on there. We then, Jesus, listen to that rain. We then after that put the Welsh Woolly Trigger on and push the target out to not 32 but 31.5 yards and we just got this. And that is a full 12 shot mag. And if we just put the five pence piece next to it, it is absolutely dwarfed by the five pence piece. Now, what I will say is obviously this is not unrested. This is shooting off of a rest. And we did have to pick our shots through the wind as well. We managed to get a few, few little shots with the wind calmed down. When we did this testing earlier, it was a little bit gustier. So we've got to put that into account too. But you can see here, we did our next test and it is absolutely bob on, dead center. Now it's not one tiny little hole as you can see there, it's definitely a lot smaller than a five pence piece but it's not a tiny hole but you've got to bear in mind, obviously let the gun let itself in and that is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So that's it for accuracy testing, I think across the board we can give it pretty much, well for me anyway, it's, it's just like I say, review's opinion, me I'm giving it two thumbs up, obviously it depends on you guys, how, what you guys think, but for a gun that SRPs at 399, even with the standard trigger what you can see down there, that's pretty damn good. And again, when leaded in, it's only going to get even better. So that's it for accuracy when it comes to the Remington Air Cobra. So now we've got to wrap it all up, put all our thoughts together, and see what we think in our final verdict. Okay then, so Remington Air Cobra, what do we think? Well, first thing I'm going to mention is actually the name, because it's actually quite apt for this rifle, and this is what could be one of the main cons for um, the gun itself. Now, the Aero Cobra, and with a lot of Remington guns, you might notice they've got slightly strange names, like Thunder Scepter and Sabre and such like that. The Remington guns are named after aircraft, and as a bit of a fan of things with wings, why I say the name with this is apt is because another nickname for the Aero Cobra, for the aircraft, was the Iron Dog. And the reason for that is because it wasn't particularly popular with pilots that decided to try to dogfight Zeros back in the day. Um, and quite a few of them got shot down. Um, it was also a bit of a pig when the higher up you flew the thing. And why I say it's an apt name is because, like I said, Iron Dog, or made of iron, shall we say, pretty much sums this gun up when it comes to shouldering it. 
Without the scope, as we said, nine and a half pounds. That is damn heavy. And here's what I'm going to say. If you guys are out there maybe looking for your next lightweight walked up hunting gun or something light for a bit of field target competition shooting or you're not just in general, you don't really like heavier guns, this isn't probably going to change your mind. Now, don't get me wrong. It is expertly balanced. It really is. It's actually one of the best balanced guns that we've ever had on this review channel. But at the same time, you'll still feel the weight. The only way you could stop that is, if you, I don't know, if you filled it in with helium or something like that. It is still a heavy gun. And again, as we said, that was without the scope when it was weighed. So unfortunately, this gun, just for that reason, may not be for you. Um, other negatives. We'll go negatives first, shall we? Because I'm just that sort of happy chappy. The trigger that it comes with isn't the best. Obviously, that's not this one. You can see that is the upgraded trigger we put in. But the trigger it comes with is not the best. It's a little bit long when it comes to pulling the thing straight out of the box. It's not the lightest, it's not the heaviest, but it's not the lightest. It's just a bit mediocre, if I'm honest. Um, like I said, it's a solid six, maybe seven at a push out of 10 job, not the best. Um, it'll get the job done, and like I said, it is adjustable, but trust me, get one of these trigger units instead. It's so much better. The other thing we're gonna mention is the scope that the gun come with. Not this one, again, that's the Konus on top. But the scope the gun comes with, it's clear, and you do have adjustable zoom with it, but you have no adjustable parallax whatsoever. And because of that, when it comes to adjusting your zoom and such, you're sort of limited by how much zoom you can have depending on the range, and in general, just how much comfort you're gonna have with that scope. Now, we did our first accuracy testing off camera. We was gonna record it, but then, to be honest, you may have seen the sheer amount of target cards that we shot testing pellets with it. I wasn't gonna waste your time, to be honest. Um, with the standard scope, it's not bad. It is a 20 pence group. Let's just push that up just to prove it. It is, hopefully, as you can see there, a 20 pence group, which, again, there is. it's not a terrible group, to be fair. A little bit ugly, but it's not the worst. But that was with the standard scope. And what I would highly recommend is you either do two things. You sell the scope as soon as you get it. Don't get me wrong, it'll get you shooting, but trust me, you can sell the scope as soon as you get it and either invest it into that trigger or a better scope. And you don't even have to get the Konus what we got here. If you want a few good scopes that are even cheaper than the Konus we've got here, take a look at the Nico Sterling Mountmaster. You can pick them up on eBay, I think for around the 50 quid mark, and they are a nice little scope, well-made scope. Or you can go the Milbro Clearview route that we use on these quite a lot for our earlier video reviews and such, which is, well, lovely and clear, adjustable parallax, even illuminated reticle if you want it. It's much better, trust me, and you'll get much, much, much tighter groups because of it. Now, this was our second grouping that we did with the Konus group, uh, scope, but with the standard trigger. And you can see it definitely tightens up quite a lot. In fact, if I can just borrow that five pence piece, you can see here, I'll just shuffle it around a little bit, which would be awkward because it's been folded in half. It is a five pence group, which is, again, 25 yards, pretty good. Five pence, PCP, that's what you'd expect from one of them. But why I say trigger or scope is because, or ideally trigger and scope, you'll get that at 31.5 yards when you get a combination of both. And the best thing is, this gun is not even close, as we said earlier, to being leaded in. It's had half a tin, maybe not, maybe maybe three quarters of a tin, if I'm being incredibly liberal with that. Three and a half, or yeah, three quarters of a tin, shall we say, just to be extra fair. Three quarters of a tin of pellets through it. And you're, you're getting this at 31 yards. And that's a full 12 shot mag as well going through there with like I said well it does not come with a single shot tray this gun which also could be another negative but that is a full mag through there speaking about the mag the mag the gun comes with it's a little plasticky but at the same time I like it it does its job and it's a very very simple to use mag there's no need to use an allen key there's no need to load a pellet from the back and the reason why I'm sort of a little bit iffy when it comes to those mags is because I like to think of these guns being used as hunting applications and when you are, say, hunting of a night time, you've got your infrared gear, your night vision scopes on there, and you've got to load another mag, you're not really going to want to be fiddling around loading pellets skirt first into the back of them and then getting an allen key out and prodding the pellet home. You just want to put that pellet in, put it in the gun, and off you go. And for that, this mag is superb. The other thing I like about this is the fact you've got an ammo counter or pellet counter on the right-hand side of the mag. You can't see this because I was an idiot and spun the gun around the wrong way so as I couldn't show that off, or the bolt. Um, but uh, yeah, you have got a pellet counter in the side of the mag, which again, in hunting scenarios, or just target shooting really, it's nice to turn the gun and see what you've got left to play with. Now onto other good things about the gun. The gun itself, 
It's a positive and a negative at the same time. The gun doesn't have a regulator, which like I may have said earlier, when SMK first told me about that, I was a bit like, ah, oh, no, really? You've got this lovely looking thing and you've not regulated it. But what they're going for, and I think they've achieved, is they've gone for a gun that is very, very simple in construction. But because of that, one, it's going to last forever. And two, well, yeah, it lasts forever simply because of, like we said, there's less there is in it, the less there is to go wrong. And SMK have told me straight that the way the gun's being designed, it's essentially begging to be tuned from the get-go, which again is an interesting thing to look at. It's a chassis to build off of. Now, the other good thing, the second reason why that is still kind of a good thing, is because even though it's not regulated, the shot count you got and the consistency out of this thing was pretty damn good. As you can see here, we got 109, hopefully you can see that there, 109 full power shots before the gun started um, falling consistently below 10 and a half foot pounds. And although the spread there is saying 43, the actual spread is more like 25, I believe, 25 or 27 FPS, roughly around that area, simply because we had one dodgy shot, which was of no fault of the gun. You can see here, 27th shot, we had one that came out at 10.09 um, feet pounds. And the reason behind that was the pellet was loaded in and the skirt, I think, was ever so slightly crumpled or just weaker on that pellet in general, and it tore straight off. Now, to begin with, I thought, oh dear, this could be a problem with the mag, but we didn't have that ever come up since then. So, again, it's the mag itself and consistency-wise and shot count-wise, you'll get no complaints out of me. I'll put it that way. The guys at SNK, you were right. I had nothing to worry about. I admit defeat on this occasion. But in general, shot count-wise and accuracy-wise, the gun is absolutely superb. And if we just have another look at our final group here, 31.5 yards. Like I said, couldn't quite get it to 32. Look at how big that 5P coin is compared to that group. Again, that is with a better scope and the Woodfield GCP Welsh Willie Trigger, which itself at £23.99. It's not the world. Like we said, maybe selling this, the scope the gun comes with will pay for that. And you can see it is bloody worth it. It really, really is. And it's a nice adjustable unit as well. But overall, Remington Air Cobra, what do we think? As we said, if you're into... You know, maybe you like heavier guns, you want something a bit sturdier, something that is going to last, or feels like anyway, it's going to last an absolute eternity. Definitely look into the Aero Cobra. If you're after a budget PCP, you've not got that much to spend on a PCP, but you really fancy maybe trying them out, definitely look at the Aero Cobra. And, I mean, if you just like the way the thing looks, <laughs> to be honest, I mean, it divides opinion. Like I said, it is very much like a strange bastard child between a, a HW100, this is my opinion anyway, a HW100 and an S410. If you like the way it looks, definitely look at one in the flesh and shoulder one in the flesh because it's even nicer when you see it in reality. The only thing it could use, like we said, put a little bit of stain on that wood just to make it that little bit darker, then it'd be absolutely superb. Or Remington, if you're listening to this, do what you did with the Sabre with the next batch of these. Make it so it has that lovely walnut almost looking stock going through it and this thing would be jaw dropping. I mean, it's good enough now even the blowing i mean the sun's well it's been gone in all day but can you see there the way that silver band is actually reflecting on the underside of that silencer there the blowing on the gun and the finish on it is absolutely brilliant it really is but again as we said it's not for everyone the if you're not into heavier guns do not look at the at the um Aero Cobra, like we said. The other nickname for the plane was Iron Dog, and although the dog bit doesn't apply here, I'm quite confident, the iron bit most certainly does. It is heavy as iron. Very well balanced, but heavy. So definitely, maybe, by all means, give it a shoulder, but I can almost guarantee you're probably not going to like the thing. We'll put it that way. But that pretty much wraps it up for um, our Big Dan's Air Gun review on the Remington Aero Cobra. I've got a massive thanks to uh, Will from Woodfield GCP for sending us that um, trigger. You can see here it is an absolutely superb bit of kit and I cannot advise it strongly enough that you go and get one. Um, we've actually got a little plan coming soon that Will knows about um, and he sent us another one for it um, where we plan on maybe doing a, a little series coming up soon, maybe seeing if you can make a budget Springer shoot as well as a premium brand one for less. But that's something we're going to work on maybe in the next few days and uh, do it as a little pet project. But no, massive thanks to you, Will, if you're watching this. Your generosity, mate, it is unmatched. You're a true gentleman. And uh, thanks to everybody who's been watching. We've, uh, we're coming pretty much, well, we're approaching the end of the year now, but we're going to see how many videos we can uh, get out here and uh, get them thrown out and see if you guys like them and do a few more guns that you guys might be interested in. 
And thanks ever so much for the constructive criticism. I know this segment alone is going on for, according to the GoPro, 11 minutes, but about, uh, well, going on for a bit too long, shall we say. It has been noted. We're going to streamline it a bit more as we go on. So uh, thanks ever so much for that. But, um, yeah, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. If you ever need anything or if you have any questions, send us a, a message down below. Leave us a comment or get in touch with us at the website at bigdansairguns.co.uk and we'll do anything that we can for you. So thanks ever so much for watching, guys, and take care. Okay, guys, just a little, uh, little bit of extra bonus footage for you. You didn't think I was going to end this review without actually um, sound testing the gun, did you? You silly fools. Right, so here we have our little decibel meter here, which you can see here where I'm uh, not shutting my mouth, it's flittering around the 57 decibel um, reading. So we've got the gun cocked, it is empty, pointing in a safe direction. So let's give it a fire and see what comes up. Now I said earlier it's about the same as an M16, which I think was around 75-ish decibels going off memory. So let's give this a quick squeeze and let's find out how it does. Let's take a look. So if I, uh, bring that back up. It's actually louder according to this. I mean we are inside of a barn and as we said the gun is empty there's nothing in there so it will be quieter with the pellet in but I don't know if you can see that we got a max of 81.5 decibels so yeah she's if anything louder than the um, the M16. Now obviously as we said put a pellet in there it will quieten down and thankfully these guns do come with half inch UNF thread so you can put a better silencer on there if you want. But no, that is really it now uh, guys and girls. Even the phone's had enough. That really is it now uh, guys and girls. Thanks ever so much for watching and um, yeah, we'll see you next time.